today, I am Sir Eric Gabayeran Buenafe, and welcome to a day of learning and sharing. May I tell you that our specific learning objective or outcome is to analyze a text and the feeling it conveys. Welcome back to Anglo-American Literature class and I do hope you are all okay and you will enjoy our lesson for today. I will show you pictures for you to see and say something. What can you say about the pictures I have just shown you in just a short while? Do you have something in mind? Based on the pictures showed, what word can you formulate? Well, you may have a good guess and it has something to do with our lesson for today. Blasphemous, the act or offense of speaking. Example, she uttered blasphemous words. Clamor, to shout loudly and insistently. Example, the people clamor for change. Elocution, the skill of clear and expressive speech. Example, I need more trainings in order to improve my elocution. Counterfeit, to imitate something authentic. Example, the dollar bill is a counterfeit. Bourgeois, characteristic of the middle class. Example, the bourgeois family lived in a middle class subdivision. Entreaty, an earnest or humble request. Example, she asked for an entreaty from the king. Now, I would like you to pronounce the words correctly. How was it? Did you get them right? Very good! These words can be found in our selection entitled By the Railway Side by Alice Maynell But before I will read to you the selection, I will give you a short background about Alice Maynell. Alice Christiana Gertrude Maynell, or commonly known as Alice Maynell, was an English writer, editor, critic, and suffragist, now remembered mainly as a poet. Though born in London, she spent most of her childhood in Italy, the setting for the short travel essay by the railway side. In 1876, she began some journalistic works which was to absorb almost all of her adult life. May I remind you that it is a little bit longer, so I advise you to be patient. Are you now ready to listen to the selection? I am going to read it for you, and you can join me with your eyes. My train drew near to the Via Reggio platform on a day between two of the harvests of a hot September. The sea was burning blue and there were a somberness and a gravity and the very excesses of the sun as his fires brooded deeply over the seared, hardy, 
shabby seaside ilex woods. I had come out of Tuscany and was on my way to the Genovisato, the steep country with its profiles, bay by bay, of successive mountains gray with olive trees between the flashes of Mediterranean and the sky, the country through which the sounds swinging Genoese language, a thin Italian mingled with a little Arabic, more Portuguese, and much French. I was regretful at leaving the elastic Tuscan speech, canorous in its vowel set in emphatic L's and M's, and the vigorous soft spring of the double consonants. But as the train arrived, its noises were drowned by a voice declaiming in the tongue I was not to hear again for months. Good Italian. The voice was so loud that one looked for the audience. Whose ears was it seeking to reach by the violence done to every syllable? And whose feelings would it touch by its insincerity? The tones were insincere, but there was passion behind them. And most often, passion acts its own true character poorly and consciously enough to make good judges think it as a mere counterfeit. Hamlet, being a little mad, feigned madness. It is when I am angry that I pretend to be angry so as to present the truth in an obvious and intelligible form. Thus, even before the words were distinguishable, it was manifested that they were spoken by a man in serious trouble who had false ideas as to what is convincing in elocution. When the voice became audibly articulate, it proved to be shouting blasphemies from the broad chest of a middle-aged man an Italian of the type that grows stout and wears whiskers. The man was in bourgeois dress and stood with his hat off in front of the small station building, shaking his thick fist at the sky. No one was on the platform with him except the railway officials who seemed in doubt as to their duties in the matter and two women. One of these, there was nothing to remark, except her distress. She wept as she stood at the door of the waiting room. Like the second woman, she wore the dress of the shopkeeping class throughout Europe, with a local black lace veil in place of a bonnet over her hair. It is of the second woman, oh unfortunate creature, that this record is made. A record without sequel, without consequence, but there is nothing to be done in her regard except so to remember her. And thus much I think I owe after having looked from the midst of a negative happiness that is given to so many for a space of years at some minutes of her despair. She was hanging on the man's arm and her entreaties that he would stop the drama he was enacting. She had wept so hard that her face was disfigured. Across her nose was the dark purple that comes with overpowering fear. Haydon saw it on the face of a woman whose child had just been run over in a London street. I remember the note in his journal as the woman in Via Regio and her intolerable hour turned her head my way, her sobs lifting it. She was afraid that the man would throw himself under the train. She was afraid that he would be damned for his blasphemies. And as to this, her fear was mortal fear. It was horrible. Too, that she was hand-backed and a dwarf. Not until the train drove away from the station did we lose the clamor. No one had tried to silence the man or to soothe the woman's horror. But has anyone who saw it forgotten her face? 
to me for the rest of the day, it was a sensible rather than a merely mental image. Constantly a red blur rose before my eyes for a background, and against it appeared the dwarf's head, lifted with sobs under the provincial black lace veil. And at night, what emphasis it gained on the boundaries of sleep! Close to my hotel, there was a roofless theater, cramped with people, where they were giving Offenbach. The operas of Offenbach still exist in Italy, and the little town was placarded with announcements of La Bella Elena. The peculiar vulgar rhythm of the music jigged audibly through half the hot night, and the clapping of the townsfolk filled all its pauses. But the persistent noise did but the company for me. The persistent vision of those three figures at the Via Regio station and the profound sunshine of the day. Now, let's discuss the selection. I would like you to answer the following questions. First question, why was the man speaking at the top of his voice? What is his purpose? If you answer to be heard and to convey a message, you are correct. Number two, based on the story, what can you say about the man's character? Basically, if you have understood the selection that I have just read to you, I think you can formulate a lot of qualities of a man, including being arrogant. And imagine a man would have shouted in the middle of the people, and there are a lot of people listening to him, that means something about this quality. So, if you have the same answer or any parallel answer as what I have given, you are correct. Number three, what is the reason why the woman stopped the man from committing suicide? Precisely, the woman stopped the man from committing suicide because she has experienced a particular incident in her life wherein her son met an accident. And she understands and feels how is it like to lose someone who is very important in your life, especially your loved one. And number four, if you were one of those passengers, how will you react to the scenario? And this particular question, you may have all answers. I mean, you can have your own answers because you know someone can be having the so-called empathy to another and someone would just have the sympathy or maybe others don't care. In a way, they are not related to each other. But I think we Filipinos are very loving people. And so if the same thing will happen, if we will see such a situation, I think we will be doing something for it to resolve the so-called incident, right? travel writing, the author used techniques such as strong descriptive words, strong imagery, and five senses to arouse the imagination of the readers, including you. So dear students, 
How do you find our lesson today? Although the selection has something to do with suicide, which was committed by a particular man, but he was stopped by a woman who has experienced incident in her life, yet may I just remind you that this topic has nothing to do with encouraging you to commit such, but rather this is an awareness for everybody. I just hope that you have enjoyed and learned something today with our new lesson in Anglo-American Literature class. See you again next time. This is Sir Eric Buenafe and bye! Dear students, you are reminded to read your modules and to follow the instructions. Thank you. Always choose to inspire others. God bless us all.